Hey guys, STO Youngblood with you, and what we're going to do today is actually do a should you buy video on the Mustang Delta. Now, the description for this says that it's a uh, prototype developed for sale to the UEE uh, and ultimately was produced for smaller Frontier Militia units. Now, this is a limited time sale. It's going to be on sale through December 29th. Now, right up front, the cost of this ship, uh, if you want to include a package, is $80. Now, if you want to get the standalone variant, uh, it's going to be $65. Now there are some different upgrade paths that you can take uh, to, in order to actually get to the Delta. For example, you could do a uh, ship upgrade from the Alpha for $35. You can upgrade from the Gamma for $10. Now there's not an upgrade from the Omega right now, and that's probably because it's an AMD promotion. And if you cross chassis upgrade, then AMD is going to lose out on their in-game advertising. Now if you have an Aurora, um, you can cross chassis upgrade for free into the uh, Mustang Alpha, and then from there you can kind of use those uh, ship upgrades to get to where you actually want to be. Now the Mustangs have been labeled as the newer starter ships, um, but I really only think that title applies to the Alpha and the Beta. The Gamma is so specialized that I don't really look at it as much of a starter ship, and the Delta is kind of knocked out of that category too, just based on its price and the equipment that you actually get on it. Now, CIG states that the Delta, uh, quote-unquote, may not be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the military-specific ships. Um, I don't know about the most of you who have actually kind of actually had a chance to fly this in Battle Royale, but I certainly agree with that statement for the most part. Um, you have the same uh, top speed as a Hornet, um, and if it's a Super Hornet you're matched up against, uh, especially head-to-head, -head, you get shredded pretty quickly. You know, with that in mind, though, um, don't hear that and think, nope, not interested, because the there, there's more to this ship, um, and getting shredded by a Super Hornet is the case for more than a few ships at the moment. Now, the Mustang Delta has some pretty cool things going for it, though, which might make you want to consider it. Um, first off is the missile type that it has right now, and it's not even missiles, it's rocket pods. Basically, you're going to get 18 dumpfire rockets on each wing. Now, that comes with pros and cons. Now, the pros are that you're going to have... Um, you know, missiles or rockets, I should say, that aren't going to be showing up on people's screens, giving them a heads up that they're coming in. So they're not going to have a chance to flare or chaff to stop that uh, rocket from getting to your target. Um, they also do a lot of damage. Um, and when I say a lot, I mean uh, typically about two salvos is going to kill most targets. Um, and when I say two salvos, I mean like four of those rockets. They also fire really, really quickly, so you can spam them a bit, and their velocity is very fast, too. It almost really kind of performs more like a, uh, I don't know, a, a physical, you know, warhead, or a physical bullet, I should say. Um, they travel really fast. Now, the most obvious con when we're talking about these is that you don't get the tracking benefit of, like, an IR or a heat seeker missile. Um, that means you need to be really close to your target, or really going head-to-head -head with someone to really be able to hit anything. Um, the best usage I've found for these so far um, is when someone's killing their speed and turning to face you. Um, they're typically going to present you with a pretty good target to aim at. They're not moving very fast. You typically get the large cross-section of the top of their ship to shoot at. Um, and that's a good situation where they work pretty well. Um, the other issue, at least for me, has been aiming them. Um, you know, with gimbaled weapons and non-gimbaled weapons on the ship, um, you, your aim is kind of in a couple different places, and then have to have your ship pointed right down the middle to actually land your shots, it can be a little bit tar uh, challenging to kind of line them up. Right now, though, the, the pods are acting more like another weapon than actually having like a missile rack. Um, so you're not going to be using your standard lock and fire buttons, so they do take some getting used to. Um, you know, they're moderately effective overall, but when they're used right, they can really be awesome and actually quite a bit of fun. Some people have been saying that they think these are going to be removed, or maybe that they're not a stock option, um, but I kind of disagree with that opinion. One, the brochure says that they're standard on every Mustang Delta constructed, and personally, they're so much more of a skillful option compared to, like, lock-on missiles that we have right now, I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, the other weapons that this ship are going to come with are going to be size 2 badgers on the wing um, in a class 1 setup, meaning that they're non-gimbled. Um, and then the Delta is also going to come with a turret on the underside of the cockpit that's going to come with uh, size 1 M3A cannons. Now, I find it nice that it does come with gimbaled weapons on the nose turret, but it doesn't really do a great job of giving you vertical control. Mostly horizontal is what you're going to get. So to this point, I've had kind of a hard adjustment period getting familiar with the turret and what I can hit and what I can't hit, even with the pips. Now, obviously, there's some pretty serious issues with Arena Commander at the moment. I haven't had a whole lot of playtime with it, but something to keep in mind. Another perk that I think can kind of help justify the cost of this ship is that it comes stock with a Leaper jump engine. Now, I'm under the impression that jump engines are going to be cheap and readily available in the Persistent Universe, but it is nice to know that from day one you're going to be able to jump out to further destinations. 
I don't think this thing's going to have, you know, long range by any means. And I think it's going to be fairly limited on a ship like this because it has no bed, no toilet, or extended fuel tanks that we know about. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's still better than having no jump engine. Now, the final exciting perk about the Delta is that it comes with what's called the ca Cavalry Class Mass Reduction Armor. Now, I want to give some credit here to Reddit user uh, Agathorn, uh, and I'll see if I can find the link again to post up for you guys. But he posted more information uh, after digging through the game files, and basically he found some really cool information about this armor. So not only does this reduce your cross-section signature, but it also reduces your IR signature. And he found that it's in its current state, it's providing a 0.8 multiplier to both infrared and cross-section signature, um, both of which mean that you're going to stay off people's radar for longer. In addition to those radar benefits, the cavalry, cav, blah, cavalry armor also provides a 0.85 multiplier against physical damage and a 0.7 multiplier against energy damage and then a 0.8 multiplier against distortion damage. Now, distortion would protect you from weapons like Sucker Punch, which is going to be uh, like on the Cutlass in the Avenger. So what you're getting as a result is a ship that stays hidden longer and is better armored against attack, especially compared to the other variants. Now that ability to stay hidden longer is really important because the ship's not very fast and frankly it is kind of a glass cannon from my testing so far. It brings a lot of firepower to the fight, well I mean pretty decent sized weapons, those rocket pods are pretty crazy, um, but it does get broken up pretty easily right now. Uh, it comes with a size 3 power plant which isn't really bad for this size of a ship and a uh, size 2 max shield though it comes stock with a size 1. Um, now, I think once we actually get the ability to start upgrading our ships in Arena Commander, and especially in the Persistent Universe, and we can get that larger shield, this ship may see significant increases in its survivability overall. Now, like most of the other Mustangs, it comes with uh, two TR-2 engines, um, and it's going to have eight TR-1 maneuvering thrusters. Now, the ship itself is fairly maneuverable, but it doesn't feel significantly better than others that we've seen to this point. So, let's get to the important part of this video, and that's going to be whether you should buy the Delta or not. Now, first off, if you're not interested in combat roles, don't spend the money. It's too expensive for something you're not going to get much return on. Now, if you do want combat, then I think you need to ask yourself if you want versatility or combat. You know, even if you just want a little bit of uh, versatility, maybe to do small cargo runs or maybe bounty hunting or really anything other than just fight, I'd probably point you towards the Avenger or the 325 because both of them are in the same price range and I think they give you a lot more vers versatility for other playstyle options. Um, they're also both faster and have pretty good loadouts. Now, I think that uh, the people who are going to really kind of want this ship are going to be those that already have another ship to do other things with. You know, if you've got an Aurora sitting around that you don't really want, maybe you consider, a, you know, the upgrade path to the Delta. Overall, it's fun as hell. Um, the ship really is enjoyable. And as we see more about signatures and how that impacts gameplay, I think it's got some really nice perks going for it. You know, it's also a decently priced, kind of limited time only ship that I think a lot of people are kind of suckers for, and I kind of fall into that category sometimes too. All in all, though, I think it's probably priced about right for those that want a really unique ship with some nice new toys like the armor and the rocket pods to play with. Um, but for most, I think there's going to be better options to spend your money on. Now, I do have this ship, and I upgraded uh, an Aurora MR that I had just sitting around um, that I probably never would have flown. I don't regret it yet, primarily because it's really different and a lot of fun to fly. So you've got about six days left on the sale, so uh, you've got a little bit of time to consider it. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for now. Um, let me know if you have questions on any of this, and I'll try and get you a response. Uh, and hopefully this video kind of helped you out in your decision making a little bit. Uh, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe for a whole lot more content. Have yourself a wonderful holiday week, whatever you are celebrating, and take care.